Hey, what's up guys? I pushed the 260 in the world in Clash Royale with this deck. If you play this deck well, you can beat anything and climb to the top of leaderboards when you master it. You've got Ice Spirit, Goblins, and Mortar to distract all of your opponent's bridge spam, while your high damage Archers and Mighty Miners sweep your opponent's spam off the map and delete your opponent's existence. Even though a ton of people are running arrows in the meta because Firecracker and Archers are overpowered, your opponent will have to pick between arrows in your Goblins or your Archers. And because the deck cycle is so speedy, you'll get back to your your archers and your goblins before they're back to arrows. Meanwhile, your minor poison and log will get directly on your opponent's towers to trickle their health down. With good mechanics, this deck is impenetrable. If you don't have Mighty Miner, use Knight instead. And if you want to see more gameplay on this exact deck, check out the pinned comment or the link in the description of the video for a full video from my main channel. Let's go jump straight to some games and assert dominance. Jump into the game against Nicholas. We're going to nick his towers with our goblins. Well, we don't get any scratches or nicks on his towers, unfortunately. He decides to go in for a big Santa Claus, old Saint Nick. What you gonna deliver, man? What deck are you gonna be throwing down? Okay, if I go for a mortar here, I think it's gonna be optimal because we can guarantee... Oh, never mind. Wow, you really have another balloon deck. How many balloon players are we gonna play against today? Why are there so many balloon players in Clash Royale right now? What did we do to deserve this? All right, so the mortar is gonna lock onto the tower. We are gonna take a ton of damage from the balloon on the other side. He also has a bowler. I do not know what I'm playing against right now. This is so wacky and weird and funny and fresh. It's just crazy that people play these strategies. I've played against like at least five or six of these guys all at mid ladder. Everyone randomly has a balloon no matter what duck they have. It's like the most efficient win condition for them. Like balloon freeze, balloon rage, the E-barbs balloon with freeze and rage. Like it's crazy how they come up with these strategies. So we're gonna go archers in the back in the same side that we already have all of our damage. He's gonna fireball on them. It doesn't really matter to me. That's good actually that he has fireball instead of freeze. It's gonna be even easier for us to defend. So we can go in for a log here with the ice spirit and the mortar shot. I don't know if that kills. Okay, so log, ice spirit, mortar shot still doesn't kill a Harry Potter. Harry Potter is robust, man. Hogwarts just be training different out here. I'm going for a mighty miner at the river. He's probably gonna go in for a bowler if I had to guess because that's likely his best response. Oh. Okay, I need to go archers, and I don't know if that bomb is going to be able to kill the egg. It does kill the egg. Okay, cool. So, I was just scared. I don't know why. I could have just dropped my archers a little bit further back, but I guess my archers wanted to be on offense? Okay. All right. I vibe with that, actually. He might take our right-hand tower, so I'm going to go in for goblins here with a miner and force out a bowler so I can cycle back to archers when he goes in for a balloon in the right-hand side. Nice. So, he's going to go in overspend with the bowler and not have enough elixir to go in for his balloon immediately on the right-hand side. So, we should be able to afford a decent defense with archers, ice spirit, you know, the works. The works out here, you feel me? We're going to go in for a mighty miner. I'm going to go in for a balloon as well, counter, with the archers. And notice where I dropped the, um, the mortar. I wanted to make sure that the mortar would still be within vicinity to go and guarantee that we could pull the giant and make sure that the giant wasn't going to fall out of range of the mighty miner. Because if it fell out of the range of the Mighty Miner, the Mighty Miner would get reset and would have to walk back to start targeting the Giant again. So I decided, hey, I don't really want to mess with that. Let's not have that happen. But this guy Fireball, pretty sure I can just drop high uh, aggressive mortars and then pull the, the balloon as far as possible. And then take out his tower with a Miner and then Ice Spirit. So I think I'm okay here. Assuming I'm able to defend this, we should win, right? So he's going to go in for the balloon. He's going to have to Fireball on everything not going to work out because we can go in mortar and then we can go in for archers up high and then when he fireballs he's going to be able to hit the the balloon not onto the tower because it's not far enough right it shouldn't reach far enough yeah and then we just poison log and we win yeah it's kind of what i expected i was like you're not able to hit the mortar and the archers at the same time with the fireball and there's two fireballs left over and we cycle faster than you so there's no chance we took out the right hand tower though Mighty Miner, you put in way more work than I expected. Let's go. So we got a game against Amber, another one here. So she's or he is going to end up having a heart in their name. We'll figure out what they're going to be running. So I'm going to go Goblins. Oof, Archers. Okay, well, the best card in the game. It makes sense that people are playing it. Wait, is it a mirror matchup? Because the deck is so strong, everyone's starting to play it. Maybe they have an Expo deck, though. We'll have to figure that one out. I'm going to Miner here. I could log on top of the Archer so I can guarantee that I kill it. And then, uh, yo, I hit Goblin. Oh, I hit a goblin. Yep, I said goblin instead of goblins. I knew. I just felt it, you know? I had that sensation that I wasn't going to hit goblins. We're going to go in for a Mighty Miner here so that we can soak up the damage. He's probably going to go for a cannon if I had to guess. Remember, he doesn't have login cycles, so we can go in for goblins preemptively. Let's go. Those are the predictions that you have to make. If you know what your opponent potentially has, you can just run away with a massive lead. So, also because the Mighty Miner is going to get too close, the Mortar should retarget on something, including potentially the Tower, which is exactly what we wanted. So, we have a huge lead because I outplayed him. Oh! 
when you outplay your opponent, sometimes they'll make careless mistakes and they'll just be like, well, that wasn't supposed to be a log. He doesn't have log in cycle again, so I can go goblins again, but I'm not going to because there's probably going to be a mighty miner. Okay, he went cannon instead. All right, wow, that's a huge investment of elixir. Goblins, ice spirit, cannon. You're dropping everything you can, my dude. If you guys didn't know, ice spirit should jump onto the cannon, so it preserves our archer's HP. I think that's worth it, so then the archers won't just die to a log. Ooh, he's going to be able to get the mighty miner in front, though. That's unfortunate. So it did die to a log, just not in the way I want it, you know? I wanted to get the damage on the tower first. So we can go for goblins, and we can split them up. So if he goes in for, like, the Mighty Miner ability, he shouldn't be able to get that. Okay, never mind. They didn't split up fast enough. If you split them up earlier, then the Mighty Miner can't go and get value on you. Unfortunately, I think my Mighty Miner is going to take some beating. Okay, so this is one of those matchups that is pretty much the exact same thing, but he's got cannon to crush our mortar. So that's a bit more obnoxious, I would say. If you go for Ice Spirit on top of the Goblin Drill, you can soak up the first Goblin shot, hopefully. I got to log this afterwards so the Goblins that spawn don't end up hitting my tower. So, the first prediction that we made was really good. Maybe we can make something similar here. He uses his log every single time, which is weird. Because if you do that, then... Okay, he's going to go for a fireball. But we were able to kill everything with the archers just because they fire so fast. Oh my gosh, look at the mortar. It's going to shoot the goblins too. Wait, are you joking? That was the best mortar ice spirit combination I've seen in a while. That was immensely satisfying for me. Okay, so I can go for a poison here on top of the cannon just to kill it a little bit quicker. Maybe surprise our opponent and get him in a bad card cycle. So we can go in for like an ice spirit with our mortar and then hope we'd be able to get a shot on the tower, please? Please? No! You disappoint me yet again. He's gonna pre-log. That was an interesting placement of the goblin drill. I don't think that works near as well as he wanted it to. I'm gonna go for a log here as well, and then we're gonna follow up with another mortar. Predict the cannon, go in for an ice spirit. Fireball in the back! Okay, I'm sorry right now. <laughs> this is like top like 1,000 in the world gameplay right now, and they are messing up everything. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I guess sometimes things like that happen. Sometimes people do get tilted. Um, this, uh, this, this, they've learned from Riley, maybe. I don't know. You guys can, you guys can let me know. Riley and Ian always talk about missing spells. I think they've watched too many of their videos or something. GG, and well played. And we'll bounce on the next one. Hey, Julia finished 530 in the world. So, Probably going to be pretty good. We're going to go for goblins here, and they've got Royal Ghost. Okay, so usually when we see Ghost, it's going to be either like a Bridge Bam deck, P.E.K.K.A., or maybe like a Three Musketeer deck. Those are the decks that you see most of the time. Hey, P.E.K.K.A., let's go. That's what I thought. So, Mighty Miner is likely not going to give us the best value here because they do have Electro Wizard with every P.E.K.K.A. deck. Let me know if you guys have seen a P.E.K.K.A. deck with that Electro Wizard. Wait, Fisherman, what? Okay, I thought I knew what I was playing against, but now I don't. I'm confused. I'm very confused right now. Poison comes down. Okay, this probably is like a pack of graveyard deck if I had to guess. So I just want to go Ice Spirit. Oh, never mind. Never mind, sir. So we're going to go in for a log, bounce everything back, go in for goblins. I need to eat a lot of damage from this Ram Rider because, like, I can't defend it. Immediately, if I tried to, like with the Ram Rider counter, you know what would have happened? The Pekka would have eaten it alive. The Fisherman would have pulled everything. That would have been catastrophic for me. I can't vibe with that. I've got to get those good wins. So we should be able to finish off the Royal Ghost, and then I could go and click the bomb on top of the Electro Wizard if it comes down fast enough, which it doesn't, which is a little bit unfortunate. But the Miner is going to town. Holy. Dude, that's like as much damage as you got with the Ram Rider. You guys think Miner's weak? He's showing you different right now. That's incredible. Okay, so I'm definitely going to poison here. I think that the archers will be able to finish off the Mother Witch without too much of a problem. That's good stuff. The poison is actually the real MVP. I gave the archers credit, but in reality, the concoction of the spell is what dropped the Mother Witch. So it's interesting too, right? You would think that the Mother Witch would be the master of spells, being able to transform units, but she can't deal with a measly poison? Like, what's up with that? How's that happening in Clash Royale? Okay, so Ram Rider. Pretty obnoxious if they have the Electro Wizard in cycle because they can always make sure that they reset your Mighty Miner. I think he's going to go for a Fisherman. Yep, that's exactly what happened. Uh, not great. Not good. Not, not, not bueno. You even have Zap and Electro Wizard in the same deck. Also, what was the Ram Rider doing? Did you guys notice that? The Ram Rider had such a peculiar pattern. It was like going around the P.E.K.K.A. for the longest time. That was incredible. Probably a Mother Witch is going to come down. We'll just poison here. We should be okay. I don't think I'm going to take much damage here at all. I mean, I can just go for an Ice Spirit on top of the Piggies, finish those off, likely force out an Electro Wizard again. So if I can finish off the Electro Wizard, maybe we should win, right? Like, that, there's a chance. Oh, that was that was not good. Electro Wizard is going to come down on the right-hand side, so we're going to go Goblins to just make sure that we conclude the potential of that working out as well. Hopefully, I don't know. 
What if I go for an Ice Spirit and I pull the Rail Ghost to the other side? Will that work? Nope. Did not work. But it hit everything with the Ice Spirit, so there's something there. And go in for a Log. Finish off the Ram Rider for a really cost-efficient trade. It's going to get some tower damage, but it's not going to be as bad as we uh, were assuming. Okay, we've done a lot of damage to the right-hand side. Do I try to go in the other side and go in for, like, Miner, Ice Spirit, Goblins, and then probably force out, like, a Royal Ghost and then pre-log it? If we can kill the Royal Ghost, then we're vibing. I just need to be able to kill the Royal Ghost with my Archers. They do a lot of damage, but they don't do enough. Jeez, I really thought I could win with the Cheese. I was expecting a little bit more value than that. It's fine. It does happen. Uh, it's just hopeful that we're able to defend this. We're trying to get, like, goblins down here as well. Unfortunately, the Ram Rider should end up connecting to the, the mortar. I don't know if I can get back to another one. Yeah, I gotta go, like, two mortars here so we can continuously pull back the Ram Rider. <laughs> it just feels so weird, right? Like, I'm pulling these units all the way, the way around the map, and it feels like I shouldn't be in this game anymore. But as you can see, the defense's utility that this deck offers is second to none. So... I'm going to go in for Archers again on offense. We want to go in for an Ice Spirit this time on the Rail Ghost if, if we can. I'm going to log as well. Rail Ghost is going to have to come down sometime soon. Ice Spirit is going to basically finish off the Electro Wizard, which is nice. We can go in for Archers again whenever we want. Definitely going to go in for them soon. Ice Spirit here. Go in for Goblins up high so then he's not able to hit everything. And then maybe we can just go in for like, I don't know, a log and be okay? Should we be fine with just a log? Yeah, I guess so. That's pretty cool. All right, we're going to go for Archers, we're going to go Mighty Miner Tanky, and we're going to go Ice Spirit. We should be able to kill the Royal Ghost with this Ice Spirit, and then Mighty Miner, and then cycle back to another Miner, and then potentially go in for a Poison if we get lucky enough. I don't know if this is going to work, but we have to try it. Miner's giving us a ton of damage. Okay, he's probably just going to Poison and Zap me and walk away to win. GG and well played. I don't know why you would BM. That was a really fun and close game, and I think you played extremely well. So I'm going to give you some love and going to give you the well played, and... You know, we'll bounce on the next one. You can't win every game you play, especially when you play against top 500 players. Sometimes they will outplay you. As you can see, this guy finished 500 of the world with 3,000 medals. So a top tier player. Still a super close match. We'll bounce on the next one and hopefully bounce back there. So we got a game against Neto, Barba Fantastico. So we're ready for a fantastic deck from you. What are you going to spring into the game with? Archers. Well, you know, I have those two. Everyone in the meta has them. You're not that cool. You know, it's just the strategy that everyone's doing. I feel like after a card becomes this overpowered, Clash Shroud should usually emergency nerf it, but since this is a common card, I'm completely okay with Archer staying this strong because everyone can use it. It's not like this overpowered champion that not everyone has. That's kind of a vibe, you know? You feel me? I'm gonna go for Ice Spirit here with a Miner, and then maybe we can get some value. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna go and click the bomb because, uh, yeah, that wasn't very smart. I, I wanted to kill the Skeleton Army, and I didn't want to respond to it, so I guess it kind of worked, but it could have been better at the same time. Generally, in this matchup, if you're playing against a Hog Rider Earthquake deck, it is optimal for you to go for Ice Spirit plus Archers to finish off the Hog Rider. And that's four Elixir for four, but your Archers give you Counter Push, so it's really a great vibe. The other thing is, you can go for Goblins plus Ice Spirit, but that's usually going to get logged. At least the Archers will stay alive. And if they try to pre-log an Ice Spirit, usually the Ice Spirit jumps onto the Hog Rider before they can actually kill it with the log, unless your timing is just really bad. So we're going to go in for Goblins here, and we will see what we can do. Just trying to tank for the archers for a slight longer period of time would be nice while the mortar locks onto the tower, and we can go in for an ice spirit here with the mighty miner. Fully countering the hog rider if I did it correctly, and I think I did. Nice stuff. So we're gonna go for archers. Meanwhile, the mortar is mauling that tower. Oh my gosh. It seems like this guy had no faith in the mighty miner on defense. But if you use your mighty miner effectively, you know, the hog rider isn't ever gonna get damaged. That was good arrows, but he did it slightly too late, so maybe it wasn't good. I gave him credit. I, I said it was a good play, and it was a good thought, but you needed to do a prediction arrows to finish them off in time before we were able to nullify the prince's charge. But I guess he was scared of me potentially going and dropping something up really high, like at the Mighty Miner at the river where I was hovering it, or potentially going in for, like, a Mighty Miner that just laughs at arrows and says, you don't matter to me. He's going to go for a uh, Musketeer, so I just want to go in for the Mighty Miner to go and make sure that he wouldn't be able to get the Musketeer onto the mortar. And then we can go for Ice Spirit Archers, as I was talking about before. That's generally the best play that you can do. And then if they go Arrows, you can go for Goblins afterward, and you're going to be fine. Notice how the Mortar is really dumb, and it doesn't target what we want. It's probably going to die without giving us a final shot. I had no faith in the Mortar. <laughs> but it's okay. Sometimes that happens. We can go in for another Mortar aggressively. And generally, you want to save your Mortar for defending against the Hog Rider, but it just doesn't really even matter to me that much. We can go for an Ice Spirit here, and then get him to go in for a lot of uh, Elixir, maybe going in for a Musketeer or something. 
probably going to pre-arrow, so I'm going to go in for a Miner instead. We'll see if he decides to. Yep, that's what I thought. Now we're going to go for Goblins. The Mortar shoots your tower. And then we can go for another Mortar aggressively and expect you to go for Musketeer because that is the only other card you have. So we're going to Ice Spirit and make the prediction. Okay, so Archers die to a Log plus a Mortar Shot. So that is well worth it for me. Then we can go Mighty Miner here. Hopefully we're going to be able to finish off the Musketeer with Archers. Maybe we can bait out Arrows so then he doesn't have them on offense. So then he can't go in for anything uh, on our Goblins. He doesn't Arrow, so he's going to Arrows on this now. This is actually me getting outplayed a little bit. Definitely well played on our opponent's end. So he is gonna not going to get that last uh, shot with the Hog Rider, so that's good. But I did get a little bit more aggressive with the Mortars. I guess, you know, I got a bit ahead of myself, and we're just going to slow down the game, go for Miners on the tower, and walk away the W. Generally, the way that you want to play is not play as aggressive as me, but it's more fun for me to play that way. So that's generally the way that I play. I'm going to go in for a Miner here. We can go in for an Ice Spirit. He is likely going to go in for Arrows, so we had to go for the Ice Spirit there. And then we can go for Archers to finish off the Hog Rider. Notice how the Arrows just aren't doing as much damage as our Miner will. So slowly but surely, over time, we will get a better interaction than our dude. Especially if we go for a Poison. The only thing that was problematic for us is him potentially going for more things and then uh, not really giving the Archers any respect out here. We're going for a log. Maybe we can kill the Musketeer. We kind of expected him to drop something in the back. I wanted to get more damage. It didn't happen. We're able to go in for an Ice Spirit here on the right-hand side. Interesting that he's going to go and spam that. Did not expect that at all. I'm going to go Archers on the other side. I'm going to go in for a Miner. I should just be able to defend this quite easily. Even going in for like two Mortars and a Mighty Miner. Notice how I'm focusing on fully defending the Hog Rider first and foremost more than anything else. I'm even going to log, even though it doesn't do anything, just to guarantee that he can't break through. So... If you guys want to really buckle down and guarantee the W, the best thing to do is go in for defensive mortars. If they don't have a big spell, they're never going to be able to break through your archers, your mighty miner, your ice spirit, and your mortar. Even if they have arrows for your archers, it's never enough. And after focusing up and destroying our opponent, now we're at 2,300 in the world. Yo, we got a game against Warlord Zed. What's up, dude? You coming all the way from League of Legends to play against us right now? We're dropping good luck and see what he's up to. Do not want to be making the first play if he's going to be a warlord. Maybe he's going to be spamming. Come on, dude. You're not living up to your name. You're making me drop my mortar as the first thing. Jeez. So we're going to go archers off to the side. So then hopefully we can go and kill the bowler. Archers are going to out damage that bowler. Watch. It's going to happen. It has to happen. So if we log, uh, do we get him to click the monk ability and waste it? That's so nice. I'm really happy that worked out. Because now we don't have to worry about the monk, you know, killing all the rest of our cards. It's going to die to our tower. No reflection arrows back in our face. It feels good. So we know that he's going to probably have a Lumberjack Balloon Freeze deck, just like everyone in Clash Royale right now. There's so many people running these type of strategies. It's probably one of the easier decks to play. Ooh, okay. This guy is going to go in for a Fisherman. So maybe not the deck that I expected. Also, I want to be able to have that Fisherman die. Nice. We can go and click the bomb. Please lock onto the tower. No! He left, but he didn't leave the way I wanted. He was supposed to bombastically drop a bomb on the tower. Okay, so this guy is going to go in for a graveyard, which is not a great strategy because we can just go in for a log, goblins, and then mighty miner and be okay. Also, I don't know if you guys noticed, but the spectator just keeps spamming goblin emotes and it's kind of obnoxious, so I'm going to mute emotes. We can go in for a miner here as well. And then what do we do? Do you want to go archers as well? I think that might be an okay strat. But generally, when you play against Graveyard, the strat is going for Mighty Miner in the back. And then you can cycle two poisons. You can cycle one on offense and you can cycle one on defense. Only do this in the later stages of the game and triple elixir or double elixir. But I'll show you guys that and I'll point it out when we are able to do it. But generally, in single elixir, you just apply aggression with your miners, your mortars, try to get a lot of damage. And then in the later stages of the game, you can even go in for miner plus poisons if they go for tombstones or stuff to catch your miners. Because you'll be able to cycle back to a second poison to counter the graveyard. Or you can just counter it with archers and, you know, goblins since you have so many great answers to your opponent's spam. He used his uh, monk ability, so I don't think he can get anything here. He might go in for a frisky tornado on top of our mighty miner and our archers, but fortunately that doesn't happen. So he's going to go in for a bowler. Oh my gosh, no, it's going to reset it onto the archers. Awful for us. We can still go for poison. As I said before, you are able to do this and get away with it, so that's why we're doing it. And he's likely going to go in for a Graveyard Freeze, which is totally fine for me. I'm going to go in for a Mortar and expect him to go for the Graveyard, and that would be an overcommitment for him. Now we can go in for our Goblins after he decides to go for a Freeze, and then we can Log. Notice how I'm already back to my Poison. This is what I was talking about. Poison is in my hand. If things got risky and sticky, we would be able to just unstick everything <laughs> and make it real tricky for our dude. He's also going to go for the Monk ability to try to tank for the Mighty Miner, but the Mighty Miner still ramps up over time, so it doesn't even care. We're going to be able to go in for a poison because I believe that the Inferno Dragon is just going to die to the archers. 
The Mighty Miner is tanking as well, so maybe we can kill the bowler and have the archers walk into the tower if we're lucky. I'm gonna try to click the bomb, but it just doesn't work again. That's so unfortunate, but wow. I'm talking about unfortunate. You know what's unfortunate? Uh, three archer shots that are from a half HP archer. That's just ridiculous. It's so fun to use this deck. I really love destroying graveyard decks with this. I hope that he pulls the Mighty Miner with the Fisherman, so then we can go and yoink and then click the bomb on his tower for 500 damage. Click the bomb on his tower for 500 damage. Work, 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 work. No, it wasn't within range. That's so unfortunate. It's okay, though. We can just go in for a Poison and then go Goblins and then go in for a Mighty Miner to just hopefully kill everything after the Inferno Dragon dies. The only scary thing is the Bowler doing that. If he's able to use the Bowler... Wait, the Fisherman literally pulled it out of the range that the Bowler would be able to target my tower. The bowler had everything lined up, and the fisherman's like, nah, that's not going to happen. You have a plan, but I'm here to ruin your own team's plan. Okay, so we can go in for a mortar. It should be able to shoot the executioner and then also hit the fisherman. He's going to try to go in for some graveyards, but it's not really going to work because I can just continuously go in for aggressive miners and poisons and force out more elixir from our dude. So I'll try to show you guys what I meant by this. Actually, I'm just going to go for a poison early, and I should be able to get back to it. I have such a quick card cycle that doesn't really matter all that much. We can go in for goblins, we can go for ice spirit, we can go archers again in the back. And then we should be able to even log this and then get back to poison if I really need to. But I don't need to since I have archers on the map. Sometimes you don't even need to do that. It's kind of cool. Go for a miner here. He's got a lot of stuff coming at me, but I'm not scared. The only thing that could ever make me lose this game is the potential of him going in for like an aggressive graveyard freeze and then getting the bowler locked onto my tower, which he isn't able to do. So as long as you guys have decent defenses, you'll be able to defend everything with this and you won't have any worries. We're gonna throw more miners at the tower because obviously uh, he can't really stop them. I'm gonna go in for another one and we're gonna poison and that will walk away the win. Notice how many units he has pumped up at the river. They can't get on my tower. Meanwhile, my miner gets directly on tower, proving that it's one of the best win conditions in the game. And that's why all the professional players are playing it. If you're a mid ladder player and you don't have the best defenses, you might get steamrolled by monks, inferno dragons, executioners, and bowlers all stacked up. But as you get better at the game and learn how to play this deck properly, you will never lose to mid ladder strategies. And that graveyard freeze spammer was incredibly talented too. Way better than your average mid ladder player, finishing 892 in the world and beating him was so ridiculously easy. So if you want a deck to beat all the gimmicky decks, this is it. Check out the pinned comment if you want to see more gameplay on my main channel with this exact same deck. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe for more daily videos, and have an incredible rest of your day.